what's up guys and welcome back to my youtube channel today's fun topic is going to be house buying so this video is mainly for those individuals that are getting ready to purchase their first home but of course if you've already been through that process and maybe you're preparing for your your next home second third home and you find anything maybe refreshing or just informative then of course that's awesome as well now my first suggestion is going to be just make sure that you know your credit score and this is not quite included in my tips just because this is something that you know you need to know in general you know whether you're purchasing a home or car or just to make you know make sure that you're being uh, aware of any situations that may arise um, but just know your credit score make sure that you know things that affect it and what's bringing it up what's bringing it down there's lots of resources out there whether you're looking at videos um, using any type of um, app to help track it uh, or just making sure that you're actually taking advantage of your free credit report each year now make it take or make note that that is just a report it won't actually give you your score but it will help you catch a lot of discrepancies that may be on it and that's something that you know obviously is free and so that's at your disposal or at your advantage so just want to make sure that you are taking advantage of that but it is very important when you are purchasing home because that's going to affect your interest rate and you know you're working with your lender uh, and you want to make sure that you're always getting the best deal that you can for your home and number one uh, is just knowing your credit score always being on top of that so that's just in general, but now I'm actually gonna get into my tips. I've written them down, so I got my handy dandy notebook. And now let's ready to get started. So my first suggestion or tip is to know your local market. And what I mean by that is, you know, whether you contact a realtor or if you're just doing your own home or uh, own research, what I would suggest, you know, just make sure you start you start preparing first before maybe you reach out to someone but just know the market and i mean is it a buyer's market is it a seller's market because that can really impact your personal process of purchasing your home and what i mean by that is if it's a seller's market then you know those homes may be going off the go off the market very quickly sometimes you, there may be bidding wars you may be limited on certain no negotiations that happen with the home um, versus if it's a buyer's market that gives you a little bit more power a little bit more um lead way maybe to make different negotiations to maybe um maybe get a little bit lower price or something like that but it's kind of knowing what market is what the market is like at that time and of course you can contact a realtor if you've started looking for homes and you notice that they're flying up the market or maybe they're sitting maybe the prices are dropping or things like that those could be good indicators of what the market is currently looking like so first tip know the market Second tip, which kind of uh, ties back into the first one, is contacting a realtor. Of course, a realtor is going to be able to give you, you know, their own expertise in that industry and your local market, whether it's, you know, somewhere that you're currently at or somewhere that you're going. Um, they're, of course, going to be able to give you a little bit more insight. Uh, so contacting them is obviously a great option as well. Um, and then, you know, you start to get that, that bar rolling, that process rolling. I would suggest, you know, if maybe you're looking to start that process but maybe it's you're really not looking to purchase home six to nine months um just be mindful of that and just be upfront with them about that uh always make note that realtors are 100 percent commission based maybe there's a few out there that have some sort of base pay but if it's base it's usually going to be kind of low but most of them are commission based so if you're you know you're well aware of, well i'm looking at homes but i know i'm not going to be able to purchase you know maybe you're you're getting your credit score you're getting certain things you know lined up to purchase that home um just let them know your time frame let them know your budget always be honest with them um very they should have your interest in mind but just be be mindful of their time as well as they should be mindful of yours so keep that in mind um you don't want them showing you 20 30 homes and at that very moment but you're not really looking to buy a home to six nine months maybe even a year depending on your circumstances or whatever you're doing uh, so just be mindful of that but contract your realtor start to get that ball rolling um, start to get those kind of inside looks into the current market see what listings are looking like seeing what homes are going for on average um, you know see if if they're if they're if the actual sale price is maybe going under a little bit or um, you know or whatever the case may be just contact them you start to get a better understanding of the market my next tip is do your homework so if you're going to purchase a home more than likely you're going to need a loan unless you know you've got some some <laughs> some money money which by all means is absolutely wonderful but most of us are going to need some type of loan and so you want to do your own homework which you know there's going to be a lot of resources that can help you with this obviously that you can definitely you know look up take advantage the sun really just left me <laughs> But just know what type of loan that you're looking for, um, that you want. In certain places, there are going to be some different programs that maybe you can take advantage of to help you purchase your first home. 
um, like in the state of Texas, there are different programs to help people purchase their homes because, you know, as an economy, they want you purchasing homes, you know, that goes into that world. But just take advantage of different programs. Know, you know, if you have 20% down, that's an option. You know, those are more traditional loans. But if you need FHA, which means you're not going to put down that large percentage, you may only be doing 4 to 5% down. Then you need to know that because things like that are going to affect what your obviously what your mortgage is going to look like um your interest rate if you don't dip, put down that addition that normal 20 20 25 percent usually i think it's like 20. um then you are going to have to pay things like a mortgage insurance which is just it is what it is a mortgage insurance so you know to make sure um that you're able that the company gets their money back in case something happens so you just want to make sure that you're kind of aware of the different programs the different types of loans so nothing really catches you too off guard it is a new process but you just want to do your due diligence so you're kind of prepared um you're working with your military lender or whatever down the line also if you have a va loan those are military affiliated loans that's kind of a different avenue um definitely you know it's a it's a limited selection with that as far as the people that is, are actually um, able to use those type of loans but that's something you know to be aware of if for whatever reason you're in the military and you're not oh VA loan is an option so make sure you do your homework you know what type of loan that you can use that you want to use or whatever type of method that you choose to finance your home moving on now of course with financing your home that comes with um different type of obligations you know you need to make sure that you know your debt to income ratio not know it but you kind of have a general feel of what you can afford um the lenders are going to actually run an equation of what they are comfortable with lending you um what they according to their numbers what you can afford um so you just want to make sure that you're kind of aware of what your finances are looking like you know if you need to get some debt paid down if you need to save a certain amount of money so you can kind of be comfortable in that transition time because depending on how long it actually takes you from the time you put your bid in um to the time you actually close you know the lenders and stuff are going to start running a lot of financial records things like that on you you're not really going to be able to charge certain things so if you rely on your and your credit cards to do a lot of miscellaneous shopping or something like that that you may need to look at a different avenue for that you know you may have to move some money around whatever the case may be because you don't really want to be charging things like that after you've actually started that buying process my own realtor put it to me this way you do not want to charge a stick of gum now that is the you know an extreme a stick of gum but her method you know it, it is true you don't want to be doing anything extra because they're starting to run those financial records and if something pops up a little later or you know you made a high purchase you may have to restart that process and you don't want to and you don't want it to affect anything you know if they're going to give you an excellent rate or something like that so just be very mindful of your financials whatever loan you're kind of you're going to get in with your current finances and maybe however um, you start you know you know you pay for your monthly um bills if you need to reallocate money you know get a different car or whatever the case may be so just be mindful of that uh, moving on pick a home according to your budget and desired location now of course when you're looking at homes you know you may you may already have a certain area that you want to look at but you want to kind of narrow that down and you also want to make sure you're looking you're thinking about the future um so like just an example in my area they're getting ready to build a new high school so that was something you know I already knew that a high school was coming to the area. Unfortunately, I didn't know exactly where, but I did know I knew a high school was coming to the area. But you do want to be mindful of maybe future things that are going to be built. Maybe you're in a very um, stable neighborhood or the home that you're looking at, and there really may not be a lot of changes, but maybe you're like me in a newer neighborhood. Um, there's a lot of construction going around, going, you know, going, going around going on sorry there's a lot of construction and, and upcoming things come going on um and that was something i was kind of aware of already uh, but i kind of thought of it as more of like a resale opportunity you know rental or so I, that was the way that i thought of it but that is something to consider in your home you know especially if you know i may be here five ten years well what is that home going to look like five to ten years what is that area going to look like you don't want to go get a home like i got a great deal it was a you know maybe a slightly refurbished home but maybe that area is declining um, at the same time maybe you get an area where it's too much construction you know you don't want to drive through that all the time so just be very, very mindful of the area that you're getting to getting ready to purchase your home in uh, whether even down to the actual home if it's on a odd uh, odd size lots certain lot sizes really affect um get more attention than others some of them are harder to resell so just you know you may love it and that's perfectly fine but just be mindful if you know you're not gonna be in the home maybe five ten years what is that neighborhood gonna look like what is that home gonna look like um things like that uh, and also of course you know stay within your budget you may have to stretch on some areas like you know maybe you want to stretch to afford an additional room or something like that within reason stretch within reason what is what i mean um but just make sure you're mindful of 
of uh, things like that. Because once you purchase one, you're kind of tied to it for a while. So you do want to make sure you get what you need. Um, you don't want to be like, well, I, I can kind of get away with three bedrooms. But maybe you actually need four. So maybe that has to, you know, you have to sacrifice a study or something to get the actual room that you need. So just be very mindful. There are a lot of give and takes. And that kind of leads me to my next one. Um, your needs versus wants in a home and let depending on your budget you may have to you know kind of balance those out like what do I actually need versus what do I actually want um, and that's just you know that's just kind of normal house shopping do you need a three-car garage or do you need you know extra bedroom or you know a larger kitchen because you have a large family or something like that so just make sure you're measuring out your needs versus wants and that's also gonna help you buy your buying process and your decision to kind of narrow it down um, of course you're open to look at as many homes as possible or as, as you want but sometimes that can kind of cloud your head so I would suggest you know knowing your knowing where you want to be know your uh, you know so know your location know your budget know your needs versus wants and that kind of helps to keep you on track um, because it can become overwhelming depending on the process um, you don't want to be bogged down and you don't want to you want it to be someone enjoyable um, not like a you know unpleasant task or something like that so just be mindful all those kind of things you know hope to keep yourself rolled in help to keep you on track on the process um, and that's going to also lead me to make sure you choose a good realtor I did before in the video say contact a realtor and sometimes that's just to get you know a feel of the area and stuff like that but you want to make sure you choose a realtor that has your best interest in mind that is their number one obligation is to look out for their client now that being said when you meet with the realtor sooner than sooner than later they're going to want to um sign with you and work with you you know pretty much exclu exclusively which is understandable since it, since it is a commission-based job you know they want to get that that commission secured basically but you want to make sure that you have you know a realtor that you believe is fighting for you at the negotiation table has your best interest and things like that you know so don't feel necessarily obligated to choose to sign with the first realtor that speaks to you and my own personal experience um, the first realtor that I had, I did not sign with because um, I just didn't think that that person really possessed, you know, my best interest. They're very nonchalant about everything and I, I just wasn't, a, I just didn't really care for it. So, you know, I continued to look at homes. It didn't deter me from it because there's, a, you know, plenty of realtors out here. Um, and my second realtor was fantastic. Obviously, um, I signed with that person. I purchased my home and um, I still, you know, talked positive uh, about that person to this day so just don't feel obligated to sign with the first one make sure that you're doing you know your research if you want to on them you know look at their track record and just believe that that person has their best interest and you're just going to use your best judgment in that um, but just don't feel pressured to sign with the first one because some of them may come off very edgy like well you need to sign with me you need to sign with me well you know hold on this is a very big process in my life um so make sure you're comfortable with your realtor and you actually believe that you know they have the they have the best interest um for you because it's a very it's a very large person purchase it's a large decision and it's a very much um large investment into your into your financial future and into your life so don't take that lightly or lightly whichever now, once you kind of have this process going, you chose, you know, you've gotten your home, um, you chose whichever one, and you start looking for things. You want to make sure that you're documenting anything and everything that is not correct in that home. Um, you know, any type of deficiencies that you know your realtor will walk you through that, but that needs to be documented. And if you have any questions, concerns, if there was, you know, an example, a hailstorm six months ago, and you're concerned about roof damage, then you want to make sure that you're getting professionals who. Um, professionals who are experts sorry in those certain fields to inspect certain parts of your home your roof your foundation your your um ac unit things like that you want to make sure those are professionals uh inspecting them um it, you know so if there's anything that needs to get fixed or catered to or if you just you know maybe you get extra money off because you know you're going into the home knowing that you got to get something fixed those are things that need to be brought to the table and made and documented up front now, with that being said, sometimes people don't always realize that realtors do very much have a scope of practice and they are limited on their answers due to legal reasons. So if you ask them like, well, is this roof okay? If they say yes or no, that could, you know, if it's okay and, you know, it turns out fine, then of course it's not an issue. But if later on, you know, two months you're into the home and you got shingles falling off or something, you know, that could turn into a very much a big legal issue for them. So on the safe side, a lot of them will have limited answers and it's not, you know, not lack to the lack of knowledge or anything it's just not within their scope of practice so just realize that and it should be your 
it is in your best interest and it is in their best interest to suggest it to you as well to get professionals to inspect certain things um you're gonna get uh, an inspector any uh, inspector anyway on the home but just make sure if there if you have any additional things or if you want to get you know additional inspections for certain things because maybe you're aware of uh, you know like I said there was hell a hell storm or something um, then you just want to make sure that you're getting experts in those certain fields a realtor is expert in their certain field you know engineers or you know HVAC system although you know that everyone has their own scope of practice and everyone kind of has to be on their own lane and it is in your your best interest and your best investment to rely on their expertise on certain things not necessarily your realtors so if they give you a vague answer it's not out of um, lack of knowledge or rudeness they're just trying to protect themselves and they should be protecting you as well uh, for the future all right so moving on now, of course, the process, you know, it can be a little scary, but if you're working with someone good, they're going to walk you through all of this. You know, the realtors, the lenders, the title company, everyone will walk you through the appropriate process, the appropriate steps to get you to that signing table that day. Now, when you get to that signing table, it is a little intimidating. There is a stack of paperwork and you feel like you're signing your life away, but you will have those individuals from the title company sitting there and you should have, you know, more than likely you'll have your realtor with you. So they'll be right there, you know, telling you, you know, each thing that you're signing, walking you through the process. Um, so just be aware. It's okay. A lot of people have done it. Uh, you are signing a lot of documents. You're handing over a nice check. <laughs> Um, but it's worth the process, you know, you just become a homeowner, they're handing your keys and you know, you're onto a whole new journey. Your realtor is finally getting paid, so they're happy. That's a very good day for them as well. A couple things I forgot to mention. One, um, make sure that, you know, when you put a bid in that you're really serious about it because if, if the seller accepts it, you know, that contract is then live and you don't want to be missing up, you know, you don't want to mess up things like that. So if you put a bid in, make sure that uh, it's legitimate and that you are serious about it because you will be start to become responsible for it if that seller chooses to um, accept your offer. Um, and then two, when you're making your bids, you want to make sure that these are valid, thought out bids. Um, this is someone's home, so make sure you're mindful of that. The seller is always trying to get, you know, for the most part, you know, as much money as they can. The buyer is trying to pay as least as they can. More than likely, you know, you guys will probably meet somewhere in the middle, negotiations, maybe, you know, some, do some trade-offs as far as like, you know, I'll fix this or whatever. So just be mindful of that. Um, you don't want to do anything that's maybe considered an offensive offer because that, especially if it's a home that you're interested in, that seller may just, you know, not respond or may decline your offer and you maybe just lost a good property um, or a good home so just be mindful of the offers that you put in and also be mindful that if they accept it it is live so don't be out here making you know crazy bids or especially if you're not serious uh, so those, those are just additional couple things I wanted to come back and make sure that I touch point on so overall these are my tips and suggestions um, to purchasing your home uh, and one thing I actually forgot about when I was mentioning you know the future developments that may be going around your home of course, you know, you can look things up, but you can also go to your city, and this is just an example of mine. You can go to your city, um, city website, and you can actually look up development plans. Now, this is something, of course, a lot of people don't do, but if you wanna go above and beyond, look up the actual development plans that are coming up so, you, so you're really aware of what's actually coming and happening, you know, in your own city, within your own neighborhood, um, attend a city meeting. Um, now everything may be virtual or something with COVID, but just if you wanna take that step above and beyond, and actually, they're, they're actually just pretty, um, good to have you know you can actually see what's happening you know maybe we have a lot of restoration for example happening downtown so that's just kind of cool to understand and know you know efforts that the city is putting in to restore our certain areas but now that is the end of my video hope that you guys found this information insightful um and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys next time